Hello, this is Joe Neville and welcome to Aruba Central Rename APs with Postman. In this video, I'm going to take you through all of the steps to build a demo which allows you to rename in Aruba Central, of course, APs using the Postman API client. You don't need to have used Postman before and you don't need to know how to code to run this demo. I'll show you everything that you need to get it working. Let's dive straight in with the workflow then. So we start off on Aruba Central and register an application. From that application, we'll record down variables such as the client ID, the client secret, the refresh token, and combine that with the base URL that we're using for our instance of Aruba Central. Now this is OAuth2 authorization. If you're not sure about this, please watch my video that's dedicated to this link on screen now. And with those variables, we're going to record them in a Postman environment. I'll show you how to do all of this in Postman. So the environment stores the variables for us, and then we build our requests in a Postman collection. And the requests that we're going to build are a refresh token request, and that's because I don't want to manually have to copy and paste the access token each time. We'll build that first. Then we need to build a get AP settings call and a post AP settings call. And the reason that we need to create a get call and a post call for the AP settings is because a post call, when we send it, it will replace the existing data, in this case for an AP. So even though all we want to do is update the host name of the AP, if we send a post call with just the host name, then all of the other AP settings will be wiped. What we do then is we do a get to get the AP settings, save those as variables in our environment, combine them with the new host name, and then we post all of that data back to the API. That way we can safely update our AP hostname without wiping the existing data. Okay, next step is that we will then run the Postman collection in the Postman runner. This is how we can group request calls together and automate them essentially. Now there's another branch to this workflow and that's concerned with the data. What we have to do is from Aruba Central, we have to download the details of the existing APs as a .csv file. Then we need to rewrite the AP names. Now I recognize that this is the weakest part of the demo because we're manually manipulating the data here with a rewrite. If you wanted to optimize and do it much more efficiently, you'd be doing it in code. But the whole point of this workflow is to build a demo that people that don't have dev skills can implement for themselves. And so I'm going to accept that inefficiency here. And after the rewrite, then we have a new document, which I've just given it a different name, document underscore edit with the desired AP host names, and we feed that into the runner. And what do we do with the runner? Of course, we run it. So that will go off and it will update the AP host names as we so desire. But there's a final point here that I wanted to illustrate as well, because there's a bit of a cycle going on here with the variables. As I mentioned, the get call for the AP settings will produce variables that need to be fed into the post call so we're not wiping that data. So the runner itself will create variables within the Postman environment. Okay, this will make a lot more sense once you see it in action. So let's jump over to Aruba Central and get started. Here I am on Aruba Central. So we're going to go to the API gateway that's top right, bottom left, system apps and tokens, add apps and tokens. I'll call this one rename underscore AP, network operations, generate, grab the client ID, the client secret, download the token, and you'll get the refresh token there. So copy that as well. Plus we want the base URL, which is your URL here up to the .com. With those variables recorded, we go over to Postman. This is my copy of Postman. I'm working in a new workspace, so it's as though I have just opened this up fresh and new. The first step is that I'm going to create the environment that is up here, hit this button, to manage environments and I'm going to add and this one is going to be rename underscore AP and here is where we record those variables so it's client underscore ID client 
underscore secret refresh token and base URL. And as an example, then I've got my client ID saved to memory, click in the initial value box, paste it in, and you also want it in the current value box as well. Okay, so do that with the other variables, client secret, refresh token, and the base URL. And be careful with the base URL because you want everything up to .com. Delete the rest there. Now I will add that, close it down, and then on to create our collection. So I hit new collection. I'll call this rename AP as well. And for this, the authorization, we'll just skip to this step. That needs to be bearer token, and that's going to be this access token, okay, in the curly brackets, which is a variable. It's fine that it's in red at the moment. I am going to create that, and then I'm going to right click add request. Now, the first request was for the refresh token, so I'll just call it refresh token. Save that, expand that so we can see it. Okay, so this is where we need to build that. It is a post call and it is going to be to the base URL. Ah, what I need to do actually, this will save some time, is if I click here to select rename underscore AP, the actual environment when I run it, that should be able to access the variables. Okay, that's why it's gone orange because the variable actually does exist. You can see that there, the initial and the current. Okay, and the rest of the URL is O of two forward slash token. So that's the call. Now there's two parts to this. We need to create the body as well, which is raw and it's JSON. Now I will be sharing this collection so you don't have to memorize or copy all of this stuff down. You will have access to this. I've got this saved off screen. I'm just going to copy it across and paste that in. And what that's doing is in the JSON body of the post call, we've got the client ID, client secret, and the refresh token with a grant type of refresh token. Again, this is OAuth2 authorization, and I'm using variables rather than static data here. That's why we needed to have selected the right environment, otherwise it won't be able to feed in those variables. So make sure we have that correct. That's what we send as part of the body of the post call, but we also need to handle the new refresh token that comes back and the new access token. The way we do that in Postman is with what's called tests. And this is just a short script that will pass through the response from the call. Again, this will be in the collection. I'm copying and pasting that down. So you've got refresh token and access token. Now we save that. Always make sure to save as you go with Postman. It doesn't warn you very much about the saves. Authorization is going to be inherit auth from parent. Okay, on to the next call. So right click, add new request. This is going to be get AP settings, save that. And of course this is a get call. And then we want the base URL again. Okay, good, we found it. Forward slash, and it is to configuration, forward slash V, to forward slash AP underscore settings. And the information for this call comes from the API gateway. Um, don't forget the forward slash there. And then this call actually is specific to an AP. We need to add in the variable of a serial. And I was in capital letters, it's serial. You have to get that correct. There's a reason for that, which I'll show you in a moment. Just remember, capital letters serial is the variable for the URL here, right? I'm going to save that. And this is the call that we make to get the existing settings for the AP so that we can merge that with the new host name and post it back. Now, what does that mean that we need? We need something to grab those return settings. We need what's called in Postman, again, tests. Now there's quite a lot here. I'm just gonna copy and paste this across. There it is. This is the data that will come back. So it's everything here that will come back about the AP from this AP settings call minus the host name. And what that will do is it will create variables within our environment. So save that. And then on to, the, well, let's check the authorization. You've got to check the authorization is correct. Inherit orphan parent, good. Now to our next call. Actually, I'll 
close those down to give us some space. Final call then, add request, and that is going to be the post AP settings. Save that, let's expand that actually. Right, so post, let's select post call, very important. Uh, oh, actually, if we open that up, it's the same URL, It's n but it's not a get, it's a post. So I can just copy that across, paste that in. And with this call, what we're doing is we're sending the data. Now we send data in the JSON body. So we'll go to body, raw, JSON, and I'll copy across the information that would have come from the previous get call. As you can see, we have the variables, but there's one extra, there's the host name as well. And again, this variable here with device space name in capitals, that's important that you keep that structure. Save that, check the authorization, good. And that is our collection. Now we'll move over to the other branch of this workflow where we focus on the data that we need to feed in to update the AP settings. And for that, we go over to Aruba Central. Back on Aruba Central then, I'm just in the global view here. I'll go to devices. You can see I've got four APs here. I'm going to download the information about them and then change some of the sites from site A to site B as though the APs have been moved. The way that we get the information then is via this button here. So this is download CSV, hit that, and I'm going to save it. Here's the CSV that I've downloaded in Microsoft Excel. I've blown it up so it should be a lot clearer. Now, as you can see, these columns, now this is really important. Now, if you recall, I said in Postman for some of the variables, the format of them with the capital letters and the specific name is really important for the device name and the serial. And the reason for that is that Postman is clever enough to be able to pick up variables from the column headers. So you can change these or change them in Postman, but they must line up. The device name and the serial, the column headers, must line up with the variables that you've used in Postman. I'm going to do that manual data change then as well. Maybe you can do this a bit more efficiently than me. So let's say these two 303s have been moved to a different site and that's the change that we want to make. We can save those. Plus I've moved that document from my downloads folder. I'm going to put it on my desktop and I'll give it a different name so it's a bit easier to recognize. Now we go back to Postman. Now back on Postman, I think the most efficient thing to do is to line everything up by running the refresh token call first. This will populate your environment with a new refresh token, but also that all important access token for the other get and post call. So let's send that. That's looking good. We've got those updated. Now we move on to the Postman runner and we can access that via the runner button up here, but a better way is to just run the runner against the collection. And we do that by hitting this button and then run. That opens up a new screen. Here you can see the collection ready to run. Make sure you've got the environment set correctly. And then we're going to select the file for the data that we want to import. That's our CSV file. I'll select that, open it up. And what's really nice is that you can get a preview so you can see the columns. You can also see the number of rows there. And Postman's clever enough to pick up the number of rows and realize that's the number of iterations that we need. We're going to update four APs essentially here. Now the other check boxes, we can save the responses. That can help with troubleshooting. And before we run, as you can see with this, what it will do is that we'll run the refresh token call for each one of the APs. Now we don't want to do that, so I'll uncheck that here before I do the calls for the APs. And then I hit the big blue run button. This green comes up and then we've got 200 OKs coming in. We will see you've got that iteration one, the get and the post iteration two and iteration three. You can see that's completed, 200 OKs. And that's the point that I was mentioning about that we have to do the get call for an AP and then the post call. And each one of those gets and posts is for a different 
AP. Thus Postman is telling us everything is okay. Let's jump over to Central. Here's the overview. If I go to Devices, you can see that the 303H have both been changed to Site B. And if I want to run it again, I open up my CSV file. Let's move them all to Site C. Back on Postman, go for the runner. Because it's within two hours, then the access token will be fine. So I don't have to run that again. I'll hit that button there, run, opens up the runner. Select file, there we are. Save the responses, get rid of the refresh. Hit run, off it goes. Okay, we're getting 200 OKs. Back on central. Now, one of the points is that the API updates a little bit quicker than the front end here so you may not see the change immediately on the front end once you've got the 200 OKs coming in from the API then you will see the change let's refresh what have we got okay you can see one of them's come in I'll leave it 30 seconds or so another refresh and now they've all got site C in the device name that's it for this video. Please do like, comment, subscribe. My name is Joe Neville. Thank you for watching and goodbye.